Welcome back to the uh, Oz Crow Soccer Show. It's episode 19, believe it or not. We're fast approaching that half a half a season mark, if you like, that 26-week yep. uh, milestone, or half a year mark. It's been incredible. Yossip, we've had some fantastic, fantastic um, guests throughout the course of this program. And the, the, the guests I love chatting to are the young players that are either making, have made it overseas or making it overseas, uh, or yeah. even here... And they always provide a little bit of inspiration. Our next guest tonight is um, falls into that category, doesn't he? Yeah, yes. Uh, young Nicholas Bilokopic, uh, former Sydney United player. And uh, look, Bilokopic is uh, a name that's renowned in the Sydney United circles. As we can remember, his uncle Paul running around the park on, uh, in the 90s and early 2000s. Um, so uh, it's it's befitting that the family name continues, and it looks like young Nicholas is uh, venturing on to make things uh, bigger and better for himself. And uh, we welcome you onto the show. Welcome, Nicholas. Hey, how's it going? Good, Good mate. mate. Good. Uh, first of all, Nicholas, welcome to the show. And what's it like over in Uzbekistan, where you are right now? To be honest, very warm. <laughs> uh, it's a big difference from England, but I'm getting used to it now. That's all right. You, um, you, you're not tempted to go out in your speedos for anywhere for a swim. No, nah, there's no nowhere to swim. There's no, <laughs> nowhere to swim. <laughs> uh, that's all right, mate. Just joking with you. Uh, look, speaking of Uzbekistan, and uh, we might just jump in a little bit quickly about the Oli Roos and the preparations there. How how are things coming together for tomorrow night's big clash with Kuwait? To be honest, things look very good. Um, preparation camp has been good. All the boys have got along. Everyone's on the same wavelength now. I think the coaches, um, they've spread the message that this tournament's going to be a big tournament for us. We're looking to win it, of course. And yeah. I think our game, we're very positive and we're ready to go. Okay. Have you got right. any kind of insights about uh, team selection yet, by any chance? Uh, no insights at the moment. Match day minus yeah. one today. We've got a session in about what, two hours now. So Yeah. Okay. Now, you... mate. Tell us a bit about your your upbringing. Um, you've been, you know, it's a famous uh, surname, obviously, uh, um, at Sydney Croatia circles. But your dad's been heavily involved, and still is, obviously, as we mentioned, um, in the coaching side of things. But uh, tell us your 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 early beginnings. How did you take up the sport? And uh, you know, in those early years, who most um, inspired you at Sydney Croatia or Sydney, or Sydney United? Well, I think, to be honest, ever since I was young. I've been the early, well, I was an early boy in my family, um, if we're talking about siblings. So I was always that type of child that was put a ball in front of them and I always wanted to just play football. I think I started at United, Sydney United, maybe, they were called Sydney Juniors back then, at like under sixes at Lambie Reserve, just down the road from King Tom. Yeah, behind the yeah. scoreboard, or well, behind the grandstand, yeah. Yeah, and then ever since then, I just fell in love with the club. I think obviously my uncle played for them, my dad played for them, my city supports them, my dad is a big fan of them as well. So it just runs in the family and I just thought yeah. I always wanted to be in United Sydney, Croatia back in the day, Croatia, Sydney. So, yeah. so as you as you uh, grew through the age groups there at Sydney United, did, did it sort of dawn on you uh, and, and when did it dawn on you, you thought, I really want to make more of this? Well, I think it was coming to a stage where I was a field player at around under 14s. And we got Carlos' son at the time, Oli Carlos. He left the club and he was our goalkeeper at the time. And the coach said, um, Bill, did you want to go in goals? I'm like, yeah, why not? I'll go in goals. So I think ever since that, ever since that moment and since I hit a growth spurt, I thought, you know what? I could make a career out of this. I had keep coach Vita Mala who faith in me, confidence in me, and I put that onto myself, um, yeah. confidence in myself further, a bit further, and I just started taking everything seriously around like ages 16, 17, I moved schools, I went to good sports, and that's when things just escalated and went forward. Excellent. And did that involve any kind of represent representative selections, you know, New South Wales reps and all that sort of stuff? Um, to be honest, I never really got chosen for the New South Wales teams all those representative teams until like like i said when i moved schools to uh westfields yeah before once before then i was getting noticed here and there playing for npl under 20s and things like this but then um that just spiraled and took off i was then i started getting selected 
the scouts started seeing me more. I think we went to the World Cup. Uh, before then, we went to like a camp in England with the Australian team. And that was my first real taste of international football. So once I got that first little taste, I thought, yeah, this is what I want. Excellent. Now, we had uh, Jelko Kalas on last week um, all the way from Croatia. Now we've got another international guest in from Uzbekistan. But um, obviously, the, there's something there at a Denzel Park that just seems to breed world-class goalkeepers. And um, we, we actually heard from Jelko. His own son, Oliver, Oliver, is in Croatia at the moment. Um, we've, we've, you've mentioned the goalkeeping coach at... Um, at Sydney, Croatia, and he's very, very well renowned. I think he's been there for seven, eight years or something like that. Um, and there's other, a other great resume. Yeah, a great resume, and there's other yeah. great um, up and coming talents there as well. What makes Sydney United such a strong breeding ground of quality uh, goalkeepers? I think, to be honest, um, just back in the day when it was the Croatia Sydney days, all the kids that um, sort of fall in that generation of their didders, their tutters. And all their stresses, etc., playing for the club back in the days. I think that just the culture around the club, it's a very family club, and everyone that's Croatian in the area, or in Sydney, to be fair, they want to play for that club. They want to play for what the club was back in the day, and they want to try and rebuild and get it back to the stage that it was at. And I think um, for the young players now and sort of my generation, our fathers fall in, the state, in that sort of generation where it was like the, the golden era of Australia. I think that's what pushes them more to be like them type of players. So it uses, you, you, can, you can use that um, knowledge and visuals that you saw as a young man growing up as an inspiration to, to push you along, right? Yeah, no, of course, yeah. of course. Good stuff. Now, um, well, let's talk about the, the adventure to head overseas, mate. At what age did you actually step over? We moved over just before COVID. When I was yeah. 17, so I've been in okay. England now for maybe just over two and a, two and a bit years. So two and okay. a couple years. Was it years. directly to Huddersfield or was there a little bit of a trial period elsewhere as well? Yeah. yeah. So, sort of uh, when I went to when I went camp, in, camp with the Australian team, um, we first England in the first match. I wasn't really expecting to play, but the opportunity came up. I ended up having a good game and the goalkeeper coach play for England. And after that, I'm not sure if it was directly after the game, they started having contact with the coaches, etc. But it, later on, a couple of weeks down the line, I got like a, uh, my students called me up and said, oh, there's people from England that are interested in you. And ever since then, after the World Cup, we had a World, that was World Cup preparation. And after that, I went straight to England. And there was, there was sort of like a week trial uh, process, but it wasn't really a trial, it was just, me getting the environment, feeling the environment, the culture around the club, and then after I just signed. Beautiful. Was that for an, uh, for a professional contract at that point in time, or for an academy spot to work towards a contract? Um, at the time, it was for a scholarship contract, yes. And then I think it was been there now, what, just like I said, two and a bit years, and I signed three contracts. Yeah. So I think it's going quite well at the moment. You must be doing something right. <laughs> yeah. So, so. yeah. Now, when, when you first moved abroad, uh, Nicholas, um, how 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 did you first of all find it? Like, was it a culture shock? Was the intensity a lot lot different? Did you the, the teammates were they friendly? Were they very kind of uh, coy towards you? How did you find those first few let's call them weeks when you first moved abroad? I'll start off with off the pitch. I think off the pitch. Um, Things were a bit tough when I first moved there, obviously. I was only 17 at the time and I had to live with a different family called Diggs. You had to live in Diggs with a completely yeah. different family. Didn't have a car at the time, so I was catching the bus to training every morning, there and back. So it was quite tough. And once winter came, it was uh, very hard training in the snow. First time seeing snow, going out there and training, your fingers are frozen, toes are frozen. It wasn't <laughs> yeah. very fun, but... Once I got in the rhythm of things, that side, that side of things started to get a bit easier. But then when I moved to like the pitch side of things and in the training ground, I think when I first moved there, luckily enough, there was another keeper from Sydney United that was there already. He'd been there a year and that sort of helped me get into the team just yeah. into like the, that quite easily. And everyone welcomed me in fine. 
the club, it's a great club. Honestly, I can't say anything negative about the club because they just welcomed yeah. me in. They brought me in with open arms and can't complain. Excellent. And Go I was ahead, going to say, and, and Hartlepool, uh, the uh, the actual town, what's it like compared to Sydney? Obviously, obviously a lot, lot smaller than Sydney. <laughs> but is it was it was that hard to adjust? Like just living in a in a town, like how 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 big is Hartlepool? How, how population wise? Hartlepool, I'm not sure what the population like is there, but I didn't actually live inside of Hartlepool. I lived in maybe like half an hour away in a place called Durham, which is very beautiful. But um, Hartlepool's right. So when the clouds are out, it's very depressing. But <laughs> compared to Sydney, I don't think compared to Sydney. So, yeah. so just just on Hartlepool. So at at Huddersfield this year, they've they gave you an opportunity for a loan out to Hartlepool. Yeah. Did that come about because Hartlepool were looking for a solution, or Huddersfield wanted to get miles into you? Had it, or was it a bit of both, maybe? Um, I think, to be honest, it was a bit of both. But at the time, before Hartlepool came into the question, into the picture, sorry, um, there was a game, FA Cup game against Burnley. And I was on the bench, funnily enough. And the keeper went down in the first half. So I got my opportunity, came on, made my debut. Uh, went in a good game, we won. And that's when all the loans started coming in. I think the gaffer, he thought to himself that he did on loan now i thought to myself as well it's time to get game time against men time to experience that sort of different environment in playing football so um when hartlepool came knocking there's a few clubs but hartlepool came knocking and i thought well myself and the keeper coach we thought this is probably the best opportunity for me to play games and um, to me to build experience for sure he knew he knew the gaffer as well and some of the players so he just thought it was probably the right move for me and that move into Hartlepool, when you come into a, a senior team environment, yeah. compared to what you were doing at Huddersfield, is there a contrast yeah. to that? Like when you're sitting there as a second choice and, and not any time you're not a first choice keeper, right? Could be, you know, you, you're, you're on there on standby, but when you come over to Hartlepool, you're expected to stand up and deliver. Yeah. Just explain a little bit about the differences possibly there. Um, the difference coming into a team like that, I was told to, get, like, to go in there and just be ready just be ready to play. Um, your chance might not come straight away, and it didn't for me. When I first got there, I think the team went eight games on so the keeper, just stepped up a different level. So it took a while for me to get my chance to play. But um, being at Huddersfield, I think the environment at the time, the culture around the team and team dressing room, it was excellent. Like Everyone was very happy. I think it was a stage where we went 17 unbeaten, and I left the round six game marker in that sort of period but then when I went to Hartlepool it was kind of the same because when I got there everyone was just happy as well and when I I, I moved into there and there's a lot of other young players on loan so that sort of helped me build myself into the team as well and yeah now after the um, young Socceroos commitment now in Uzbekistan what's after that are you coming home to Australia for a short break for a holiday are you going to Croatia or are you going somewhere else or are you going straight back to England uh, for the pre-season? I dare say there won't be much of an off-season, is that right? Yeah, there's not much of an off-season here overseas. <laughs> but um, no, nah, funnily enough, I was in Croatia two weeks ago just before the tournament for 10 days. Just I got time off. They told me I can go enjoy my break out of school. They didn't have to come back for the playoffs. So I went to go enjoy my time off in Croatia, see family, friends. But the my off season depends on how we go in this tournament. Like um, it can either range between I think the seventh or the nineteenth. So from the end of the group stage to the final date depends on how we end up going. Hopefully mm -hmm. we go to. The, but if we go to the final, we have to be back in the twentieth, back at Huddersfield. So not that much of a off season for not me. Much of a rest. Yeah. Hey, Twinchy, I've got an update for Nicholas. Your dad's team's nil nil at half time against Bonnie Rig, mate. So uh, do, they're doing well. <laughs> hey, um, just, just speaking about those commitments there nicholas um you know look you, your year is full on you've got 46 rounds to, to accommodate in the uh is, it is 46 in league two isn't it yeah yeah. 46. yeah 46 rounds to accommodate how about your your life outside of football what are you doing to occupy yourself in terms of are you studying are you are you have you got a social network you can keep yourself busy with um 
to be honest, after we train, I just want to go home and just forget about football. I go home, and I, I'm at training ground about five hours a day. You just want to go home and relax. I'll probably just put on some Netflix. Um, I like to just look at things online. I was supposed yeah. to be, I chose the option to just wait until my career is done and then I'll mm-hmm. start yeah. things like that. But yeah. Yeah. And do you have much opportunity with with teammates or with social friend, social networks that you've made, um, you know, to just to adventure out and see what the UK is about? Yeah, no, of course. I just I've got my car, so me and mates, we just yeah. we want to go do something. Just hop on the we just go travel to I don't know Manchester's forty five minutes away, Leeds is thirty minutes away, going to the oh, city wow. centre, yeah. things like that. Everything's quite close, so. Can travel in England <laughs> not that long to be honest. Yeah, yeah true. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's not that much. And the, and the highways are pretty good too. Yeah, very good. And very efficient. most importantly, they drive on on the left side of the road like we do. Hey, there's not much thinking. <laughs> 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 not like when you go to Croatia and you have to think five steps ahead. Just yeah. Um, no, yeah. that's great, uh, Nicholas. Um, any any last mess- um, questions, Josip, for for our guest tonight? Oh, look from from this tournament yourself. What what would you, if you had to sort of just to vocalise your expectations of yourself? You know, what, what would be a pass mark for you? Um, for me, I just think hopefully the team wins. I just want the team to win. If we can get a win, it just looks good in all of us, and looks good for the next generation of Australian players coming through. I think yeah. what the case is just want yeah, and then a good note. Yeah. Good stuff, mate. Awesome, mate. Well, on that note, we wish you all the very best. Nicholas, thank you for joining us. Um, at times, I think there was a little bit of a, 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 a jumpy connection, but I think we, we were able to get everything that we were able to hear from you. So we wish you all the very best. Enjoy the Uzbeki heat. And then uh, <laughs> um, when, when you get back to uh, England, it'll probably be a heat wave and 23 or 24 degrees or something like that. So, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be a very, very hot summer <laughs> over in the UK. <laughs> I don't uh, know. Does it get that high end up up in Durham, mate? Does it get past twenty two degrees? Uh, it never did, but the sun was always out, so I couldn't complain. Better than the there you go. Okay. Yeah, oh, absolutely. No complaints there. Good. No, no that's right. All, Nicholas, right. all the very all best. The... We look forward to hopefully seeing you uh, make an appearance for the Oli Roos, and if not, we'll keep a nice uh, eye across your uh, development as you take on the UK calendar year next year. Yes, thanks for having me, guys. Good on you, uh, Nicholas. Nicholas Bilokapic. Uh, you're listening to the Ozcrow Soccer Show. <laughs>